Bill Cage did know, welcome to Red Square Live, a brand new show for United fans any, everywhere in the world, here, Salford, South Africa, everywhere. Now, each week we're going to have a legend on, and the word legend is sometimes banded about too casually in sport, as we all know. But tonight we've got Norman Whiteside, a true legend, a true United icon. Also in the show, we've got uh, Bex over here, my, uh, my co-colleague over here, who's going to take all the social media. I don't get whistles, do I? So what have you got coming up, Bex? <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Pete. Yes, hello, everyone. I'm Bex, and I'm going to be speaking to you through our social media. So maybe you've got a question for Norman, maybe you've got a question for Pete. If you have got any thoughts or opinions on today's game, then we want to hear from you. Now, you can be in touch via our exclusive social media partners. They are the true Red Devils. So you'll be able to find the link to their Facebook page below. So make sure you jump on there, post your questions, your comments, your thoughts, and opinions, as I am going to be going through them, reading out just some of the best ones and putting your questions to Pete and Norman in today's show. Now, alongside that, we have got a pretty awesome competition for you. Yes, that's right. If you would like to get your hands on this replica 1985 FA Cup winning shirt, which I will make sure is signed by our legend and the winning goal scorer of that match, Norman Whiteside, then all you need to do is stay tuned to find out how you can beat. Thank you very much. I wonder why uh, certain people on TV get sacked for such sexism, mate. Uh, we, as I said, the le word legend is far too casually thrown around these days. But this man was one of my boyhood heroes. Please put your hands together for Mr Norman Whiteside. <laughs> Imagine if we'd won today, what would it be like? Oh, no. It wasn't great, was it? Well, new era, new dawn, bit of reality check, was it? Yeah, I expected a bit more, Pete, to be fair, today. Um, I, was there, I was there on Tuesday, and, and it was something similar. I think we played a lot around the back, um, you know, 16 or 17 passes for the defence, and some of them looked a bit nervous to me today um, and didn't look forward to look sideways. And I thought that was a little bit disappointing, so we need to penetrate a bit more. But the players, the players you probably like, not Sean last season, and maybe, and maybe in Fergie's last season, have had a good pre-season, but no, everyone, no one was at the races really today, was there? Sorry, I can't hear you, Phil. <laughs> Don't tell <laughs> me. That, that's live TV for you, Norman. Sorry, So, a, a new era, I mean, new manager. Obviously, it shows that we've got to get uh, new people in there, I mean... You know, you and it's like to play under a new manager. What, where do we go from here? Where does Louis van Gaal go? The first thing I, the first thing I looked at, sort of, um, well, pre-season and just um, Tuesday and today, I think round the um, the back, you've got young centre halves there who do look a bit nervous, um, and I'd love to play against them in today's game by, by you know, no problem at all. But we need someone like a Vidic, who we should never have sold, by the way. Um, and Fittich would have been there to, um, you know, master them and, and look after them and, and sort of tell them what to do and orchestrate at the back. There's some, we need a domineering centre-half to, to make things happen and then the youngsters will learn from that, I think. Do you think the captains here, like, I mean, we know what a great player Rooney is and all that, but do you think sometimes, do you think sometimes that maybe having, like, a, a captain like someone like Vidic or something is a help to the actual the team? I mean, can Rooney do the job as effective as a forward? Well, yes, I, I think um, Rooney's up for it. I mean, I, I'm like you, I've been down to Carrington um, numerous times. And he's the first out in the training park. He goes and he, he kicks the ball 60 yards and chases it like a school kid. Um, his enthusiasm is second to none. So I would say that he has got that, um, he has got that captaincy um, mentality, if you like, because he's a leader and he wants people to, to um, you know, respond to what he's doing. A view, look, a view look of what he does on the park against the people around him. People will learn off Wayne Rooney because he's a trier and he, you know, it's up to the other the players to respond. Was you surprised with some of the players who actually got a run out today? The players who many have thought will be out the door even by now. I mean, like, like uh, Fellaini, obviously. I will, well, not just Fellaini, but I'm, I'm talking about... Um, um, it was great to see the young kids get an effort, um, get a bit of a, um, a run out. Um, I've seen, I've only seen a few of the the, um, the USA tour, the games over there. 
um, a young black kid, he's done all right. Uh, people like that, and it's good to see that the manager's going to give the youth uh, a bit of a, a bit of an effort. Who would you actually? So many names banded about every week. We're going to buy this, we're going to buy them. Who would you, in the current market, who would you think would be a good addition to the squad? I, I think at the moment, um, Pete, they're, 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 everybody's um, sort of tied up or, or having um, signed new contracts for their for their own clubs. So the likes of Hummels, I believe he signed for Bayern Munich. Yeah. Um, but the people out there are they're sorting their own. We've only got two weeks left. Uh, it's going to be difficult, but the, the names were Hummels and Fidel, uh, people like that. Apart from that, I don't know who's out there, and the, ma the manager might have to stick to what he's, what he's got. Is it fair to say that when things started going wrong last season, a lot of people immediately thought maybe David Moyes, a nice bloke, not really big enough for the job. Where Louis van Gaal, I've had the pleasure of meeting him recently myself, but he's got a bit of a presence, it's one game. Yeah. Surely with his track record, someone like van Gaal can turn things around get people in and still get the best out of the current players. You can't write it off after one game, can you? No. Sorry, can, can we hear at the back or just, can we just be quiet? We can't hear in the front. Oh, wow. Anyway. So do you think Jimmy could barely bring people on? Do you think he, he could still motivate the players who were there? I mean, the well, likes he's of got, and I, I, Danny looked like they were out on the door. Unfortunately, um, like you're talking, I've not met him, uh, but his presence um, is there. He's got the arrogance, he's got the, um, um, the ability. He's a bit of a Fergie-like character. People would be frightened of him, and he wouldn't be frightened to tell you, um, you know, like, like he did with young um, um, Shaw, yeah. get out, get extra training done. So he knows where he stands, um, and, you know, you do it his way or you, or you, or you don't. I mean, what, what, like, you've obviously played in the big run for so many years, and then Fergie came in and was documented, I mean, what is the position as a player? Obviously, you realise, you know, will he give me a chance? And some managers obviously will give you a chance. Some others, you don't fit into the plans. You don't like it at all. What, what, you know, what, what's the What can you sort of like relate to, like when when, when Fergie took over from Big Rock? Well, the thing about um, Van Hal, wherever he's gone, he's always give um, youngsters a chance. And I think they were the, um, I think it was um, Ajax in the early days. You know. Half of the team went on to win the um, the, cup, uh, the European Cup, yeah, uh, as it yeah, was then, yeah. the Champions League. Um, all managers have different qualities, but I think it's fantastic for him if he comes in. Um, like Big Ron, give me my, my chance, like you said, 16, which is fantastic. Um, you know, Fergie like, got the young Sharpie, people like that, 17. Um, so I always say, well, Shamat Busby always said, like, if you're, you're good enough, you're young enough. Or, or, I always get that mixed up, but is that the way it is? Yeah. So, yeah, so I was fortunate that um, Big Ron had faith in me, and hopefully the kids today, um, the manager will have faith in them. But is it, is it safe to say, or fair to say, that Sir Alex, as great as he was, you know, the team hasn't been as good in the same problem since Moscow, in all truth. And the team sort of like hasn't, you know, sort of been getting sort of weaker. Not a bad team, but not the greatest United team that won the last couple of leagues. I know it's still a league. Van Gaal seemingly like, you know, Holland weren't, you know, to get Holland as far as he did in the World Cup was quite an achievement, yeah. weren't he? They weren't the best players out there, but he does well. So I think he's got them sort of characteristics and qualities as a manager to sort of get the best out of the players that maybe aren't completely world class. I think, Pete, that's probably, that, uh, of all the strengths he's got, that's probably it. Because I read a little column um, in one of the newspapers um, yesterday and about his background and everything, and he had a bit of a, you know, a very hard upbringing. Um, you know, his family were very disciplined and all yeah, that. Yeah. And it comes across um, about himself as an individual that he's the same, and he expects the same about his players. So he's got something absolutely um, solid about him, and you know, you've got to, like I say, you've got to do it his way. And he's come in and said he keeps using the word philosophy, but it loses me a little bit. But um, I, I, hope gets, I hope he gets. I hope he covers a multitude <laughs> of sins, but I hope he gets that philosophy right. <laughs> We've got loads more to chat with Norman about. But have you got anything for us at the moment, Bex? <laughs> Um, True Red Devils, thank you very much. Keep sending your questions to me if you are there. Uh, Van Gaal and why he picked Wayne Rooney as captain. He likes his attitude. And of course, he says, I like him very much. Do you agree? Who's your favourite captain for United? Do you think Rooney should be it, or do you have somebody else that you would prefer? Um, then we have, oh, here's an interesting one. According to, Hull, uh, according to the Mirror, Hull City will make a 14 million bid for Welbeck. 
Do we want to keep him? Do we want to sell him? It is up to you. Get in touch and do let me know. Um, we've got Kelly here who says about today's game, it's a lesson to us we need to buy before the transfer window ends. Not the result we wanted, but highlights the lack of strength in the squad. Maybe that goes back to needing to spend some money. And Carol has written, woeful defending, not a lot going on. We hope Robin Van Persie is back soon. So do keep your questions coming in to us via the True Red Devils Facebook page. Now, competition time. As I said, get your uh, hands on the, sh the signed shirt by Norman himself here. All you need to do is head over to the Red Square Facebook page, find the picture of Norman in his United kit. Then you just need to like the page, uh, share the picture, beg your pardon, and write the word comment in the box below. That will automatically enter you into the prize and we will be picking one winner at random later on. Pete. Norman, you've mentioned it before, right in her album. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But we're going to have a short break and we're going to get everyone so they can hear the show. So we'll have a short break and we'll be back in a few minutes. See you soon. Well, welcome back to Red Square Live, the beauty of live TV. I'm here with the legend Norman Whiteside. I don't really want to go on too much about today's game, Norman, for obvious reasons at the moment. Let's go back and talk about your career. Loads of people here would have watched you like me. You mentioned your debut at Brighton, and after that it was a bit of a whirlwind sort of few months, wasn't it? Well, it was actually, because um, when you're a kid and you're sort of... Um, um, the, the manager tells you you're making your debut at 16 years old, it um, sort of... Well, I was substitute, actually, Barley. And the lovely thing about that was, I remember, you know, talking about money in the game today, I was on 16 quid a week um, when, I, when I came on as sub. And on the way back, the boys are going like, what are you doing with your win bonus? And the win bonus was 800 quid. So as a 16-year-old, that was like, whoa, 12 minutes work, this will do for me. But um, always a pleasure to um, um, make your debut for Manchester United. And I'm, I'm in the top three or uh, youngest three or something like that, which is fantastic. Um, and Big Ron had the confidence in me to give me that um, chance. But how did you feel? That's a big enough achievement for someone your age and all that and dedicated to playing football. But when the World Cup came up and you sort of got selected at such an age, you know, I mean, that must have been mind-blowing at the time. Well, it all happened very quickly because after the, the, the Brighton game um, in April, um, then it was, we, we had the last game at Old Trafford against Stoke and I scored and my full debut and managed to score my full debut. Um, and then it was a, a little tour um, with the team. And then while I was on tour, I got the phone call to say they've made the World Cup squad. Um, you know, Billy Bingham um, sort of picked me for Northern Ireland to, um, to go to um, Spain. So I was, I, I broke that record. I beat, obviously, the famous Pelle, um, 17 years and 41 days, well documented. And someone, you know, we always have lots of um, stats or statisticians around, and quite a lot from Norway. As you know, you go to Norway quite a bit. And one of them sent me a thing saying, well, not the next World Cup, but the one after, if I'm still around. <clears throat> I will have been the youngest player ever to play in the World Cup for half of the World Cup's history, which is a bit weird, isn't it? But uh, another eight years to go, boy, it will be Not fine. Hey, it will be fine, man. The following season, of course, uh, you, pay, you know, Wembley became quite significant for you for the first time when you scored in the League Cup final against Liverpool when Bruce Crobler nowadays would have been sent off for that foul on Gordon McQueen. <laughs> Down the right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that was quite a big season for you, wasn't it, that season? I mean, quite a big season for the club. And, you know, can you, what do you remember of that season? Well, the first season's always a big um, season for any youngster getting in the team. And I did play more or less all the games that year. Um, and I scored, like you said, scored in the both League Cup, as it was then, and FA Cup semi-finals, and the, the League Cup final and the FA Cup final. So I didn't score many goals, but I scored important goals, things like that. And, you know, to, to play 50-odd games in my first season was unbelievable. But then the second season, when that, becomes, when that comes along, it's like um, that, in so many ways, is your hardest season because people suss you out as a kid. And they're going like, if I'm playing against Hanson and Lawrence and at Liverpool, say, or I remember at Old Trafford, my next season, it was against um, Butcher and um, Osman, two England internationals. Yeah, yeah. And, and they always try and suss you out. And like I say, it's always harder the second season. And, um, and I, I, I probably did find it a little bit hard. I didn't score the goals as freely as I did in my first season. 
But um, you, you grind away and you grind away. And, and Big Ron had faith in me. And I do remember, actually, in that season that I, I didn't score for about 14 games. And if you're a forward, certainly in today's game, in those days, I didn't score 14 games. And I remember it, um, I was against um, Southampton, icy night, against Peter Shilton at Old Trafford. And I managed to hit one, and I closed my eyes, and I just hit one. And he pushed it up into the top corner, and I scored, and it broke me duck after 14 games. But the, these days, the manager, three or four games, if you're not doing it, you're out the window. So I was, I was that happy. The manager had faith in me to keep me, keep playing. You knew at Norman, like anyone here, it was a bit of an albatross around the neck, but not winning the league. And yeah. In the summer of 1983 to 84 season, when we'd won the FA Cup, we'd been in the League Cup final. Lots of people, like we used to say, we're going to win the league. And quite a similarity between today, really, when we had the three signings of Jesper, uh, Alan Brazil, who was actually a good player in those days, not just a talk show host for yeah. the time, was it? <laughs> and uh, we had Gordon Strachan. And I remember the first game in the 1983-84 season, Watford at home. And it was almost like today, but maybe not quite as bad, but we drew one all. And that was a reality check. And I know we had some good games that season, including the memorable Barcelona game later on in the season. But it was almost a disappointment after you know, winning the cup and being in two finals the year before. Well, the tough thing about that is um, when you go back to those days, and obviously I was part of it, is, and, and it sounds terrible, but we were a cup team. And the biggest disappointment in my career was I never won the league. And the reason for that, in my opinion, was that um, we were inconsistent. It only takes you to win six games and you've won the cup. But we could go on a, you know, we could go on a, um, I don't know, a, a Boxing Day run and beat Liverpool at Anfield, Bush beat Liverpool, come back two days later and bottom of the table, Norwich City, Norwich and we'll City. lose at Old Trafford. Yeah. So the big word for me was inconsistency. Um, you know, a cup game is a one-off, like anybody can win. But um, that's why we never won the league, in my opinion, at, at that time. Would you say also maybe that we were perhaps a bit reliant on the great Brian Robson sometimes? Because I remember when Robbo got injured, it seemed to me like that, you know, at time at West Ham, for example, that our season seemed to go when his shoulder went that day. Well, it just seemed to happen like that. But, I mean, I'm a Brian Robson fanatic. I'm a Brian Robson fan. Uh, fan. I'm a Brian Robson friend. Um, I'm a Brian Robson sort of, you know, a fan club, if you like. And Robbo was the best player the world's ever seen, and certainly um, the British League has ever seen in the 80s. Um, and for me, people ask the question, I don't know if you're going to come on to it, um, Pete, but it was the, he's the best player that I ever played with. And, you know, he could score goals, he could tackle, he could, um, you know, he could defend. And, and he, was the, he, he was the captain, he, 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 he really strived forward. And everyone looked up to him and what you're saying about Rooney before. And, you know, people look up to the captain in so many ways. But certainly around that time, Robbo was the best player in, in English football. And he did get injured, but we had to pick the pieces up. And maybe not so well, but because when you're the best player and, and things don't go well, people p um, piece things together, don't they? Yeah. And then say, a one-man team. I don't think any team has got a one-man team. Well, Even Argentina, team to more, to say more. He was such a, so hard to replace for the reasons you said. We're going to chat more in a minute, Norman, but I'm just going to go back to Bex. you got something for us there? Yeah, thank you for your questions. If you have been sending them in on the True Red Devils page. Um, people are really stuck on today's game, actually. The question is, why can, th uh, why can we play three at the back without any world-class defenders? Uh, Ashwin seems to say, remember that most of United's title-winning season started with a loss. Hashtag believe. So maybe... We just need to keep the faith a little bit. And one more, they need to move the ball a lot faster and make more runs. That is one fan's opinion. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How do you think United can improve on today's game? OK, we are going to go for a short ad break right now, but do be sure to come back. We'll be moving onto the couch with Pete and Norman to take a few questions from our lovely studio audience here. Um, and don't forget, the competition to win the signed shirt is still open. Just head over to the Red Square Facebook page and you can enter that way. See you in a sec. Welcome back to Red Square Live, where we've still got a live Leak studio audience, and there's nothing wrong with that, and they're going to get a chance to say a few things now. Just going back to chat with Norman, because I could chat with Norman all night, as you well know, and as Denise knows. Uh, the following season, of course, was uh, another great season in respect of how it ended. However, 
you could say, again, with a few games to go, maybe 10 games to go, United, Tottenham and Everton, all going for that championship. Just didn't quite have enough in the tank, did we, to do both? Like, Everton were a great team that season, weren't they? Well, they were, because um, you know, they, they won the, I think, the 85 and 87, they won the, the, um, the Division 1, as it was then. Um, but they had the thing, in, maybe in, in depth or in strength, whatever, but we didn't. And, and I heart back about the, the being a, a cup team, and that's actually what we were. And I, 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 I hate being tagged along with that because I hate the fact that I didn't win the, the um. The, and do you know something? I, I was dead, dead pleased for, it was Brand Robson when he did win it, you know, because he stayed on and he won it and he lifted it. Was, if anyone deserved it more than anybody else, it was Robbo, and I'm dead chuffed for him to do that. But yeah, same old thing, Pete. We didn't um, couldn't come up with the goods over over a long period of time. And if you're going to win that league. It's over a long period of time. It's not over two or three years. Just before we move on to one of the most memorable moments we to talk about, in 85 in the semi-final, after the first game when really, you know, we were winning in normal time, Liverpool equalised in the last minute, we were winning in, in extra time when Frank put us 2-1 up. And then I always remember like the, the linesman flagged and the, the referee didn't see it and Liverpool equalised. When we went 1-0 <laughs> down in the replay at Main Road, I mean, and yeah. they nearly went 2-0 up before half-time. I mean, did you possibly think that we had our Bloody chance? Hell, this is like a history lesson. What happened? <laughs> well, I always remember that game because obviously I ran on the pitch at telling the first <laughs> on the team. But did you actually think like maybe, I mean, how did, how did Big Rod psych you up to say we could still win this? Because it looked like the odds were stacked against us. Well, really? to be fair, you don't need psyched up to play against Liverpool, do you? Um, you know, the Liverpool are there to be beaten and it doesn't matter if it's tiddlywinks or it's a game of chess or a game of five-a-side or FA Cup semi-final. You always want to beat them. And, um, you know, you don't need much motivation to do things like that. Um, so with that particular game, I think Robbo, I think he was quoted as saying it's one of his favourite goals he, in the top, top corner at Main Road, wasn't it? And then Sparky went through um, and, and got one to the bottom. Bruce Grobler couldn't get his hand Was that, was his that hand the game too. I said it was on the pitch? But I always remember getting back to watch, watch it on the highlights. And, uh, I don't like remember the, you being a teammate of mine, boy. No, no, no we were on at the end, the climb over <laughs> to the pitch. And the great late Brian Moore said, uh, and Grobler never smelt it without Robbo's goal. That's something up there. Right. Well, you, go you got anything else for us, Bex? Right, I do. I actually think we're going to take some questions from our live studio audience. Norman, I'm going to go out and find some good ones for Off you. Off you go, Bex. So, if I just make my way around <laughs> here. Here we go, sir. Would you like a question for Norman today? Thanks very much, Bex. Um, Norman, um, Old Trafford has always been a, a fortress. But for the last uh, season, certainly, and today, that, uh, that moniker has seemed to have slipped. Have you any idea why um, away teams can come to Old Trafford and, and get a win against, uh, against United? Well, I think, um, first and foremost, I'm not sure if you heard <coughs> the first little part of our conversation, but um, you didn't hear it. Right, what I was saying is that defence, we need someone, and we should never have let go of um, Fittich. Uh, in my opinion, we need someone to boss the defence, and that's what well, Pete and I were trying our best to say. And um, you know, Fiddy's there, and then the younger boys or the, the inex more inexperienced boys around him will um, you know learn off him. And and I do believe that the Fiddy's thing, you know, he could have stayed. And I've seen loads of little interviews and that, and I think he wanted to stay, but there was a situation at the club at that time there where he couldn't stay, and you know that's down to other people out of our hands. But the defence certainly needs strengthening because what we've got at the moment isn't strong enough to, um, to, to um, be that fortress, what you just said, in the, in the um, Premiership. People used to come and park the bus, as they say, park the bus um, at Old Trafford. You break us down. But they're coming now and we've, they're coming and attacking us. You know, that's never been known before. So we need some stabilisation right at the back and then the youngsters can learn off that and then get back to our ways of... You know, I always, because I, I go around the ground every home game, and people are saying, Norm, what do you think the score is? I always go for nil. I always go for win 2 nil, 1 nil, 3 nil. I always say nil because I think they shouldn't score. And that's my thinking. They shouldn't score at Old Trafford. No one should score at Old Trafford. Maybe it's me being blasé, but no one should score at Old Trafford if we do our job right. And what you're saying is that fortress recently has been broken down. We need some top player or players to come in and, and, and stop it. It starts from the defence and, and we need to do that. Well, on that point though, do you think that also a lot of people would say that is it a coincidence that teams started coming to Old Trafford with belief they could win 
when Fergie retired. Which one did you beat us here last year? Beat us, beat us in last year, yeah. And again, and, and you know, and people have that confidence to come here. We're, like we're saying, uh, uh, two or three years ago, people were frightened to death to, to come into Man near your old Trafford. Um, and it's a sad state of affairs if they think they can come and get a result. But that's where we're at. And we've got to turn now. It's up to us. They'll, every other team coming this season will think the same thing because of the result today. It's up for us now to turn that around and go, you won't do it anymore. That's where we've got to start. You get anything else for us now? I do indeed. OK, we had another question over here. Another one for Norman. Oh, there you go. Norman, uh, when you were playing, what would you have rather won? The league with United or the World Cup in Northern Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> Can, can we bring a fence in for Norman to sit on? <laughs> Another fence, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I'm going to say. I always divide my career into two categories, domestic and international, so both. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we've got one more question over here. You had a question for Norman? Hi, Norm. Uh, one question. You said that you missed out on the league, and back in the 80s, United were a cup team. Why was that, though? Tell no. that again. Go on, Bolly. What was well, it? He basically, said, going over the question again, why were we a cup team? We sort of, why would you say that? I mean, you don't like really say it. My, big, my big word, like, again, I don't know if you heard, was inconsistency. We couldn't do it week in, week out. That was our problem. And the reason, I don't know, some players raised their game for a particular... Have we played Liverpool, <coughs> um, like I said, at Anfield, or Arsenal at Highbury, or whatever, um, you know, people would raise their game, but you still have to do that when you're playing the Sheffield Wednesdays or the Norwich Cities and the people at the Leicester Cities or whatever. No disrespect to those teams, but they were lower in the league at that time, and we couldn't do that, and that, that, that annoyed me a lot, actually, if I'm being honest. Well, Red Square Live is, of course, about fans uh, having a say, and I think Betsy's going around with Yeah, I think people. we've actually got one more over here, one more actually. Over one more question, yep. How do you know? Um, you say Robbo was the uh, best player you played with. He was the best player you played against. Best player I played against, um, well, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, it, it, and I have to go into world football, is Michel Platini. Um, but he was, he had everything for me. I mean, I don't know, some of you guys might remember um, Barcelona here in 84, the best atmosphere ever that I've witnessed at Old Trafford, which was unbelievable. And Diego Maradona was part of that team. And funny enough, big Graham Hogg had him in his back pocket. Unbelievable. But um, sort of a Juventus played against Platini a few times. France played against Platini a few times. And I played against him in the World Cup in Northern Ireland in 82. And, um, you know, for me, he was by far the best player that I played against in world football. Now, the hardest player I played against was a guy called Karl Heinz Foster, who played for, well, and then it was called West Germany. And Northern Ireland beat them 1-0 um, at home, and we beat them 1-0 in Hamburg. And I scored the winner in, in Hamburg. But the one thing, and the reason I'm going to tell you that is, this is how football pans out. I was playing against Carl Heinz Foster. He had me in his back pocket for 85 minutes of the game. And the Hamburg, 90,000 people in Hamburg are gone. They're starting to boo, they're starting to get all night, they're starting to get a bit anxious and all the rest of it. So Colin Foster, he moved into midfield and we have got Manny Kelts and all these the world champions, by the way, West Germany. And and he moved up. And this guy on our team, Paul Ramsey, came forward, he shot, I stopped it, I turned around, I swiveled, and I put the ball in and against Harold Schumacher, we won the game one 0 Who got all the headlines, all the adulation, wide side, thanks to Germans, all that. I had the biggest nightmare of my life for 85 minutes. And I put the ball in the last five minutes and I get the whole saying, he's the hardest player I played against um, without a shadow of a doubt, but the best was Michel Platini. We could chat with Norman all night and show people in the crowd could, but I just want to uh, give all my round of applause. And then I've got, to move. I've got to move on and just say, Norman, uh, 1985, obviously, the cup final. I, I've admitted this before to you, but... When you got the ball in extra time, I was screaming, pass it to Strachan, pass it to Strachan. <laughs> so was he. <laughs> I think he was. But, uh, I mean, we know you, can, you, you were great for scoring sort of big goals and all that, but, I mean, I've got to talk me through that goal again, when you got the ball, right, when GC passed it for defence. We were all tired. We're... But the, the daft thing about it is, is that um, I actually 
worked on this. You know when people say that you've got to work on, in training and you've got to do this and you've got to do that, and your practice makes perfect, and your practice makes perfect. And Cantona, as you know, a um, personal friend of yours, and that, that um, you know, and he did it time and time again after training. And I used to do it all the time. And what I used to do was, when I got near the box, or even in a five-a-side, and you've got a, a goalkeeper there, and you've got a defender, all I ever used to do was line up the defender um, so that the keeper couldn't see the ball. And it, I was at the cliff every day, never worked all the time at the cliff, but it, for me it worked on the big day at Wembley. And that's what happened when I got the ball sparky, turned around, pushed one out to, the, the, um, out to me in the right wing, and I was absolutely knackered, Paul. It was the 110th minute, wasn't it? So I'm looking up, I'm looking up, I get closer to the box, closer to the box, I can see Neville holding on to the, his post with his left hand, and then I'm looking, Neville can see me with the ball. So I'm thinking, well, that's no good. Neville can see me, he can see the ball. So I threw my leg over the ball, and then come in, Pat van den Hoy comes in, and he obstructs Neville's view. Neville cannot see the ball anymore, and that is the moment you hit it. So once you've hit the ball around the defender, you buy that distance. And that distance is when Neville can first see it, that's the distance his hand is going to be away from getting to it. So you actually buy that distance by the defender screening the goalkeeper. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah, thank you. But, but do you know, though, do you know, though, can I just say, at Wembley that day, I used to love all the banners, the cup final banners. One of my favourite banners I saw in the United end, Everton Van Den Howe, United win the cup. I it was very, very <laughs> uh, Have you got anything else for us, Bex? Norm, um, I was going to ask the question that Pete just stole off me, which Sorry. was the uh, cup final. He's goal. like that, isn't he? Yeah, he, he does all the time. But um, your defining moment for United, would it be the 85 cup final goal or would it be the semi final goal or, in your own opinion, leaving United? What's your honest opinion? No, you see, now you've hit, you've hit me with some lovely um, little things there because it, for me, I always say TM, uh, TM, TM, too many to mention. I captained the team when I was 20, leading them out in the halfway line at Old Trafford when I was 20 years old. And I had Gordon Strachan, all these senior pros playing for their countries, shouting to me, Norman, Norman, get us G'd up, Norman this, Norman. And I'm 19, I think I was 19, and I'm certainly one of the youngest. Debut, two semi goals, two final goals, or three Wembley final goals, actually. Um, and, and then, you know, for, that's for United. Then the World Cup, Northern Ireland, Pally's record, two World Cups. I've got loads and loads of actually brilliant um, things that I can look back on, and I can't say to you one of them. They're all, they're all as equal um, um, to me that I'm proud of each and every one of them. No, we just had some news in. Thank you. That's some news in about United have actually signed. Uh, you've actually signed someone for midfield. <laughs> what do you reckon of that? Now this is actually Stay a serious on. issue. You might all be aware of this bucket challenge that people are doing at home. People are near for James McCarthy, young lad with a brain tumour. Yeah. I met him today. Well, James is a top lad, and uh, I managed to get, get, went down to Carrington actually. I took James down as his photos will show. There he is, meeting Louis Van Gaal. And that's the time when I see when Lou Van Gaal came in, his presence was immense. So that's why I'm confident today he's just like a bit of a blip. And uh, he's happened to meet, he's met Fergie as well recently, uh, yesterday. We've got lots of activities going on. I think we've got something, haven't we? A fundraiser? Yeah, just for keeping the loop out this, JMC Foundation, they are holding a charity dinner on Salford on uh, Friday, 24th of October. We'll be hosted by John Virgo. Uh, guest speakers, ex United players will be there. Norman, yourself, you shall be there. Am I on that one? You are on that one, along with a couple of others. Um, it'll be a great night, loads of raffles, auction. Um, if you think that you can help and be in touch with that, then then please go on our Red Square Facebook page to find out more details on that one. Is that it? Yeah. Well, it's been great chatting to you, Norm, as ever. It's been great students. Thank you for being with us tonight. Red Square Live, which is our first show, will be back. Hopefully, United will be back. Thank you, Norman Whiteside. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.